Hi, I'm Jessica Ann Pressler, licensed clinical social worker coming to you from the West Coast. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Jessica. And I'm Sylvia Puentes, registered nurse and faith-based coach and mentor coming to you from the East Coast. If you enjoy our video content, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. It's great seeing you today. It's great seeing you. So Friday. Today we're talking about mental health and the holidays. And um, we're going to discuss stress and depression and um, anxiety and SAD, seasonal affective disorder today. Yes, yes. So um, we definitely know that um, that stress and anxiety and depression, um, unfortunately, can be a big part of the holidays and um, sometimes even take away from, you know, the celebration part of it. Mm -hmm. um, what, um, what would you say are some of the triggers for this? Well, um, we have financial pressures. So, you know, during the holidays, presents, costumes, clothing, putting on events, going to events, uh, going to events, um, financial reasons, all that for financial, but also going to events you don't want to go to because um, now the COVID restrictions are gone, but COVID is still around. Maybe you're nervous about going, but you feel pressure now because work, uh, for example, or financial pressure. You don't have the clothing you want or, you know, um, social pressures. Uh, going to family events that you seeing family members that are toxic or or even narcissists that you were able to avoid all year and all of a sudden now you have to face this these people, uh, yeah and seasonal affective disorder which um, I mentioned which is a biological um, depression an actual form of subset of depression that occurs uh, it occur, can occur in the spring and the summer but we're going to talk about fall and winter. And it comes on uh, in the fall and leaves in the spring, and it has the same uh, same uh, feelings, uh, symptoms of depression, uh, being lethargic and not wanting to do things that you normally like to do, and uh, overeating. In the winter, it's usually overeating. It can, you know, depression is either under, you know, either one, oversleeping, craving carbohydrates, uh, just depressive symptoms that come in and go um, during the season. Yeah. Um, I think that with SAD, especially in the areas, the regions where it gets darker earlier, that's a big factor in, in you know, these symptoms with SAD or um, how people respond to that. Uh, just that gray feeling. And um, I know that I could relate to that. And, um, you know, how how uh, healing or, or how much it helps to have that sunlight and the warmth. Mm -hmm. Well, I think all of us, uh, not all of us, many of us can relate to just feeling less happy when it's dark and gloomy and happier. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, beautiful out and you're walking outside and you're enjoying the weather, but with people with sad, it's actually biological. And um, although it does occur more during the, um, in the, in the Northern regions that you pointed out when it is dark and gloomy in the winter. And um, so some of the effects, uh, effective um, remedies, um, I, uh, not proven necessarily, but believed to be helpful, uh, are light therapy, vitamin D, and it's it's a light lamp. It's a lamp that people will use in the morning, twenty minutes or more. But you need a medical professional to tell you about how to use that. Um, and also uh, cognitive therapy, helping you reframe and how you think of things and um, uh, SSRIs, medication, antidepressants, and also um, one particular one the FDA approved is being preventative to take before it starts, before SAD begins in the fall. And uh, if it's the fall winter one, and that is Welbutrin or Bupofen. And these are all um, remedies that is believed to work, but, you know, I guess a person would need to know they have it and they would need to have it for two years or more. Right. In order, in order for the diagnosis to be um, given. So um, financial stressors and um, that, you know, the anxiety and the depression, what are some things that can be done to 
basically lessen or you know combat that all of those um feelings well financially um you have to be able to know what you not to not to try not to do things that you just can't do you just can't afford and there are alternatives let's just say with presents um making a present or you know come over and I'll make dinner for you as your present or i mean there's creative things you can do to um make someone happy um, giving and, and realize that it's a, it's a societal thing. And maybe the person you're giving it to, it doesn't really care that it's an expensive present, um, but know your limitations. So you don't become stressed with overspending um, with stressors. Let's just say you go to a family event and there's a toxic person there that you've able to avoid um, all year and now have to face, try to take some control of the situation by either limiting your time at the event. Like I'm going to come to Thanksgiving, but I can only come for dessert. Or when you're there, um, try very much to have um, uh, emotional boundaries and not engage in the stuff and maybe spend time talking to Susan in the corner and not so much next to Joe, the toxic person. Um, or, uh, you know, be mindful of your feelings. We understand, hopefully mindful ahead of time or mindful when it's happening and try to do good self-care, uh, for yourself. Yes. Um, self-care for me would be, um, having moments, let's just say, you know, you're about to go to this event. So let me take a walk <laughs> before I go with my, with my puppies. Um, what self-care look like for you? Um, self-care is, um, maybe just even taking a step back and sitting quietly, um, you know, just kind of like letting things settle down, um, within myself, um, prayer is a, is a mode of self-care for me. I also, um, love just getting in my car and letting, you know, just fresh air, putting on my favorite playlist and, you know, uh, those are just simple self-care things that I do um, mm -hmm. that really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and find things that you um, enjoy. If you like going out with friends or you like, um, uh, you know, anything, anything that you, you learn about yourself, massage or um, a bath, a hot bath or meditation or yoga or yeah. just something that, so before you go to a stressful occasion or event, um, you, you're taking care of yourself. So it's easier to handle. Yeah. And no one should, Absolutely. And, and not to do things alone. If you're, if you're feeling depressed or um, anxiety ridden, or, you know, that you can talk to a friend or a professional person, you know, either faith-based or um, a life coach or a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist, you know, that you're, that you don't feel like you have to do this alone and there should be no shame it should be i don't want to use the same word but there's no shame in feeling um anything at all there's no right or wrong feeling and uh and if you talk to the right people who you know that would be supportive you would you would um have support yes absolutely i think that that's something that we we mention a lot because it's so important to have that support and to feel um, you know, that you have that system in place with friends, family, um, coaches, mentors, therapists, wherever that support may come from. That is so very important, especially during times like this. Mm -hmm. I agree. I yeah. so agree. And God knows you and I have held each other's hands through a lot. And, you yes. know, we are just on a live. So I think we should point out that one of the things that was brought up, one of the stressors that was brought up during this, during a live by someone that came on was the stress of um, after uh, being in a divorce situation and having to um, deal with uh, the, the ex and deal with the ex in regard to children. Or maybe it's the first year that you don't have your kids during Christmas and you've always had your kids during Christmas and you have to deal with that feeling of loss and mourning, you know, mourning the family that you had. And so I think that was a very important point that someone brought up and that we discussed. Yeah, very valid. And um, again, as you said, it's, it, it's a process. And again, help, having that support and the self-care um, um, techniques or tactics to, in place, very helpful, very important. And the other thing that we're going to talk more about next week is when you lose someone you love 
um, and uh, through death, because we, we talked about divorce, but through death and grieving during this time. And some people need people to be around them. Some people need to be alone and how a person would deal with um, social situations when their spouse is not there, when they're not sitting at the same seat, when they're not um, just with you during the holidays and how someone copes with that, the, the, how their, their grief. Yes. You know, yes. For them. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be back next week with that video. And again, if you enjoy our video content, please hit the like and the subscribe button. And there's, and at the same time, also, there'll be, there's a blog that um, I have on my website at jessicaannpressler.com that is, uh, that is about what we speak about on our YouTube video and our Instagram lives. Have a wonderful day. Bye.